Governor Bullock, I want, Governor Bullock, I want to bring you in. You do not support Medicare for all. How do you respond to Senator Warren? No, health care is so personal to all of us. Never forget when my 12-year-old son had a heart attack within 24 hours of his life. Had to be life flighted to Salt Lake City. But because we had good insurance, he's here with me tonight. Bullock, his he just, yeah, you just said you're, that you're offering a false for. choice, sir. Congressman, not at all. So that was Steve Bullock. He's some governor. Didn't really make any headways, but I just the way he talks. <laughs> oh, he's here tonight. Beto work not at all. No way. He's here tonight. So I want to make a quick point before we get into essentially Jake Tapper and Fox News. They they tell me exactly who I should champion when the you know one percenters and the bankers and Wall Street when they're opposed to one of the candidates. I like that candidate. That makes me like the candidate even more. So, first of all, Fox News, they, uh, so many fucking, <laughs> I've seen a whole bunch of them, so that, you know, I, could, I think I could say the whole goddamn channel. They just keep on hitting with all this racist shit, right? Marion Williamson is for reparations. A lot of them are for some commission on reparations, so they want to look into it. Now, the way that Fox News, the propagandists, they're sitting there saying, well, you know, white America, they're trying to scare the shit out of white America. That's what Tucker Carlson and Fox News is doing. Well, they're saying, look, they're going to get reparations for what? The black Americans who are all amongst us. Uh, then they're sitting there saying they're going to give unlimited rights and freedoms and all the social programs. Democrats love the illegals more than they love you, of white America. They love the illegals more than they love you. So... You know, they're for open borders. They're going to give food stamps to MS-13. This is all just racist shit, just a bunch of racist shit, okay? So when it comes to reparation, Marianne Williamson is the only one who's promising reparations. I think Elizabeth Warren and Kamala Harris have some sort of reparations commission, and I want to say somebody else does too, but when it actually comes to the real policy, Bernie Sanders, he only said that asylum should not be criminalized which it should not. Asylum should not be criminalized. Now, I want to have a chance to tell the story about my friend, Addie Barkin. Addie is 35 years old. He has a wife, Rachel. He has a cute little boy named Carl. He also has ALS, <coughs> and it's killing him. Addie has health insurance, good health Senator, insurance, and it's not Senator, nearly enough. I want to, no, I'm, gonna, I'm coming right, I'm staying with you. I'm staying with you, but, but you, you it exceeded your time. And so let me just stay with you on Medicare for All. All right. At the last debate, you said you're, quote, with Bernie on Medicare for All. Now, Senator Sanders has said that people in the middle class will pay more in taxes to help pay for Medicare for All, though that will be offset by the elimination of insurance premiums and other costs. Are you also, quote, with Bernie on Medicare for All when it comes to raising taxes on middle class Americans so to pay for giant it? giant corporations and billionaires are going to pay more. Middle class families are going to pay less out of pocket for their health care. And I'd like to finish talking about Addy, the guy who has ALS. Of whether or not the middle class should pay higher taxes in exchange for guaranteed health care and the elimination of insurance premiums. How do you respond, Mayor? So we don't have to stand up here speculating about whether the public option will be better than, or a Medicare for all environment will be better than the corporate options. We can put it to the test. That's the concept of my Medicare for all who want it proposal. That way, if people like me are right, that the public alternative is going to be not only more comprehensive, but more affordable than any of the corporate options around there. We'll see Americans walk away from the corporate options into that Medicare option, and it will become Medicare for so all without us having wait, to kick any seconds. Would you raise taxes on the middle class to pay for Medicare for all, uh, offset obviously by the elimination of insurance premiums? Yes or no? Costs will go up for billionaires and go up for corporations. For middle class families, costs, total costs will go down. Let me just 15, just 15 seconds on the clarification. You are willing to raise taxes on middle class Americans in order to have universal coverage with the disappearance of insurance premiums, yes or no? I think you can buy into it. That's the idea of Medicare for all who want it. Look, this is a distinction without a difference whether you're paying the same money in the form of taxes or premiums. Look, in this country, if you have health coverage, 
If you don't have health coverage, you're paying too much for care. And if you do have health coverage, you're paying Thank too you, much Mayor for Buttigieg. care. Jay. I want to bring in Congressman O'Rourke <clears throat> on the topic of whether the middle class should pay higher taxes in exchange for universal coverage and the elimination of insurance premiums. What's your response? The answer is no. The middle class will not pay more in taxes in order to ensure that every American is guaranteed world class health care. I think. So when it comes to their actual policies, you did have Julian Castro and Elizabeth Warren, who both said decriminalization. They're going to make it a civil offense, so it's still illegal to cross the border, but they're going to be ticketed. And then that way, the whole point of doing that is to stop the families from being separated. If you decriminalize it, then you can stop, you know, taking the kids away from the parents and putting them in cages. So that's the reason why they're talking about decriminalization, but that's Elizabeth Warren. Bernie Sanders says asylum shouldn't be criminalized. So exactly where he stands on immigration, I'm sure he's for a secure border and, you know, for humanitarianism. So he's for both. Now, that's what the Republicans are trying to paint the Democrats up as. A bunch of, you know, they're, look at, you know, reparations. We're going to give all this money to black folks. Look at the immigration policy. They're going to protect the brown folks. White America, pay attention. White America, you got black and brown folks. They're going to care about them more than you. No, the Democrats are going to care about white, brown, and black people. They're going to care about all the colors of the rainbow, right? Red, yellow, purple, polka dot, peach, mahogany, caramel, pink, all the colors of the rainbow. So, you know, if you're pissed off about how they're, you know, talking about reparations, I'm excited about reparations because I felt like I was pretty much in the minority. When I support reparations, it's a historical insult. And it's a way to, you know, heal the divide. It won't fix it, but it, at the very least, it fixes the, you know, the stigma of slavery. So my generation is going to pay black folks off and say, hey, you know, that whole slavery thing that happened 170 years ago, we're sorry, here's some restitution. So even though I didn't have shit to do with slavery, uh, my generation is going to be the one that pays, you know, for the crime of slavery. And I'm okay with that. She was saying, what, 100, 200, maybe half a, you know, half a trillion dollars. So, you know, that would be a nice fat check. So for black folks, if you get $20,000 in your pocket, does that kind of help mend things over? Does that help a little bit? I would, that would be great, you know. I, shit, that would be great to get a $20,000 check. Because it gives insurance companies a chance to say no and to push that cost back on the patients. Thank you, sir. But I believe after reparations, then we would be in a post-racial society. We've elected a black president. Uh, we all, you know, most of us have gone to school with black and brown kids and white kids. So, you know, we're integrating our children. their self-segregation in communities and therefore the businesses in those communities. But there's, when it comes to my generation, I just feel like that, you know, the whole integration, busing, busing black kids to the white schools, white kids to the black schools, that's worked. That worked. You grow up thinking, you know, we're all human, we're all people. Some of us have darker skin. Who gives a goddamn shit, right? If they're, you know, playing with the cool toys, then you kind of, you know, you want to. You want to hang out with them? <laughs> I don't know. If they got, you know, I don't know. <laughs> That's I want to bring in uh, Marianne Williamson. Ms. Williamson, how do you respond to the criticism from Senator Warren that you're not <coughs> willing to fight for Medicare for All? <laughs> I, I don't know if Senator Warren said that about me specifically. I admire very much what Senator Warren has said and what Bernie has said. But I have to say, I have a, I'm normally way over there with Bernie and Elizabeth on this one. I hear the others, and I, I have some concern about that as well. And I do have concern about what the Republicans would say, and that's not just a Republican talking point. I do have concern that it will be difficult. I have concern that it will make it harder to win. And I have concern that it will make it harder to govern. Because if that's our big fight, Thank you, then Ms. the Williamson. Republicans will social... So, oh no, white America, watch out. We're going to start taking care of our black and brown folks. Uh, two, in addition to the white folks, that's a great thing. That is not something that you should be afraid of. That's a great thing. That's a good thing. We're going to heal, you know, this racial divide, that slavery, the effects of slavery are still here. And so that would go towards heal, healing the divide. And what a great country. What a great country that, you know, we uh, forget, we, you know, apologize to the Japanese Americans and we give them, you know, a $20,000, $12,000 check. So this is a, what a great nation. If we fuck over your entire nation, right, the entire 
nation of uh, black folks, African, they were the African slaves, so that whole nation of people, they had to endure, you know, the harshest slavery in all of the history of the world, and then they had to endure the segregation, the lynchings, and the hate strikes, and the hate riots, the race riots, where white people would just go in and purge black folks, it was just a purge, so this is, you know, white America's history. So there's, you know, discrimination in work and banking and a whole bunch of stuff, housing. So we need to work on, you know, the institutional racism. Reparations will go to bridge, you know, that divide to heal the, the race, you know, um, the poor race relations in America. So I think I welcome those things. So, you know, universal health care, universal college, universal child care, that's going to help white America. And if an immigrant happens to come over here, you know, some of them are saying health care. So if they're sick, we're going to take care of them. You know, I'm, I'm okay with that. That's not that big a deal because I don't want the immigrant to come in and spread disease all over the place. So if somebody is sick for the health of the country, you want everybody to be healed. Now, free college, I'm not for, I'm not for just, you know, making a rule saying illegals can't get a driver's license, um, illegal citizens, illegal human beings, because until we have a comprehensive uh, immigration policy, we have 11 million people here who are here illegally, and then we have like 15,000 people coming up on the border every day. Humanitarian crisis, also immigration crisis, because you got criminals and MS-13 and shit. So it's both, right? It's both an immigration and a humanitarian crisis. Shut I us want to bring down in on Mayor Buttigieg. Else. Mayor Buttigieg, it is response. time to stop worrying about what the Republicans will say. Look, yes. if, if if it's true that if we embrace a far left agenda they're going to say we're a bunch of crazy socialists. If we embrace a conservative agenda, you know what we're, they're going to do? They're going to say we're a bunch of crazy socialists. So let's just stand up for the right policy, go out there and defend it. That's the policy I'm putting forward. Not because I think it's the right triangulation between Republicans here and Democrats there, because I think it's the right answer for people like my mother-in-law who is here, <laughs> whose life was saved by the ACA, but who is still far too vulnerable to the fact that the insurance industry Thank you, does not Buttigieg. care about Thanks, Senator Sorensen. So whereas bleeding heart liberals might go too far, the uh, conservative psychopaths, they go too far with them not giving a goddamn about anybody. They don't give a shit about anybody. Okay? So, you know, they don't want to take care of anybody for any reason. Now, they're going to paint the Democrats up as the exact opposite. You know, open borders, reparations, MS-13, criminals, terrorists are coming in over the border. Oh, my God. This is just white America is going to be doomed. It's going to be doomed. You know, Bernie Sanders is going to save white America. Bernie Sanders is going to save white America. If Donald Trump wasn't such a huge motherfucking racist, oh yeah, some Nazis are good people, what fucking country would you have fought for in World War II? Jesus Christ, one of the best wars that we had, and you're going to take the opposite side? You're going to take the goddamn, you know, Holocaust and Nazi side? And then he wants to say he loves Israel more than everybody else. He defends the fucking Nazis. Yeah, shit. His worst speech ever, he denounced the Nazis and the Klan, but he didn't denounce the Confederacy. So which side would he have been on during the, you know, Civil War? There's another great war. America, that was another, the second American Revolution under Abraham Lincoln. So he changed the entire game. He liberated black folks, and by doing so, he also liberated white folks. Abraham Lincoln said he's not a master and he's not a slave. So... He breaks the whole notion of hierarchy, you know, to pieces. And that was great. That was a good thing. It's a good thing. But Donald Trump is going to, what, not condemn the Confederates? These are racist, terrorist organizations. The 10,000 slave owners declared war on all of America. Half a million Americans died because the South wanted to enslave black people. They're on the wrong side of history. The right side, the correct side of history won. And we're an America country and nation, you know, these damn Confederates wave America flag right next to it. If you were truly united, these states are united, you would only wave the United States of America flag. You got the freedom to be, you know, a hateful, bigoted piece of shit, but that's exactly what you're saying. Will get us there. I put a price on carbon, take all the money, give it back to the American people in a dividend. That was introduced by me on a bipartisan basis. It's the only significant bipartisan climate bill in the Congress. I'm going to increase the Department of Energy research budget by fivefold because we fundamentally have to innovate our way out of this problem. I'm going to create a market for something called direct air capture, which are machines that actually take carbon out of the atmosphere. 
Because I don't think we'll get to net zero by 2050 unless... So Donald Trump has been racist through and through, sitting there telling, you know, what, the, uh, the Puerto Rican uh, Ocasio, Alexander Ocasio-Cortez and the, the squad, so these three women of color, or four women of color to go back to where they came from. He's been, you know, spouting this dog whistle racist fucking bullshit. He calls all the African nations Haiti shitholes. Baltimore is a total, you know, shithole. Yeah, well, there's also, you know, here, um, there's a lot of white poverty all over the place, too. There's poverty all over the country. So, you know, there's 15, 20% poverty in, in general with the whole nation here. There's 33% in this county, in southern Colorado. So 33%, one-third of all the people in the county I live in are poor. They are poor. And so is he doing anything about, you know, uh, helping the poor folks? No. He's just going to say, hey, look at the poor people. They're poor because they're poor. You know, it ha that has to suck to live with, you know, rats and roaches and shit. What if there's no good housing and, you know, no, it's not affordable, so people have to live in these goddamn shills, and what can you do if the building has this shit? You could, do, you know, fight diligently in your own little, maybe start a campaign or some shit, but, you know, for wealthy folks, this is never a problem because they've always had decent houses. If there was ever a roach or a rat, you know, or a mouse, they would get rid of it right then and there, so... This is institutionalized poverty. So, you know, this, this is our racist president. He's a white nationalist, definitely. He's white supremacist. I've always wondered, you know, is he a racialist or a racist? It doesn't matter because the racists love him, so therefore that tells me something. So he's, you know, definitely racialist, and it seems to me, it seems to me that he's pretty fucking racist. He does a lot of racist shit, says a lot of racist shit, so... That's, you know, if Donald Trump wasn't so goddamn racist, we wouldn't even be having this reparations conversation. We Americans need to correct the mistake we made 170 years ago. Restitution is the way forward. Donald Trump was white America's last gasp. And Bernie Sanders is America's last hope for prosperity, for redemption, to regain our status on the world stage as a great moral leader, to revitalize and reinvigorate this country. Helping black and brown folks is good for white America. It's good for white America to stand on the side of multicultural pluralism. That's a good thing. Senator Sanders, your response? Let's be okay. clear what this debate is about. Nobody can defend the dysfunctionality of the current system. What we are taking on is the fact that over the last 20 years, the drug companies and the insurance companies have spent four and a half billion dollars of your health insurance money on lobbying and campaign contributions. That is why, when I went to Canada the other day, people paid one-tenth the price in Canada for insulin you, that they're paying in the United States. I want to bring in Congressman Tim Ryan. Con you. Congressman Ryan, your response? So the other thing that the Republicans and Fox News and all these propagandists, they are hitting everybody with socialists. So Pete Buttigieg is right. right? They're going to say, oh, socialists, they're going to bankrupt the country. We're, we got a $22 trillion debt right now, $22 trillion. So what, Donald Trump spent $5 trillion on what? To kill Palestinians? To kill some Mexican kids? To invade Venezuela? What the fuck did we spend $5 trillion on? So, you know, some people are, you know, don't like when I support UBI, even though they might sacrifice some social programs. That means some people in this country are getting paid, and other people aren't. They want to say, no, I'm going to keep my thing. Well, UBI allows you to either transition out of your thing into UBI, or you can keep your thing. So that's, you know, such a, a dumb fucking criticism. It's just like, hey, I heard a, an objection, <laughs> and I'm going to, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but it just seems like... People hate the person, I think. They hate the, some anti-Asian ra racism. And yes, I am one in a state every single time statewide. I have won those congressional districts that Donald Trump won by over 20 points. He just targeted Minnesota last week. And I've done it by getting out there and talking to people, by knowing rural issues and Thank farm you, Senator issues, Klobuchar. and bringing Metro people with me in the state Thank that you, had Senator the Klobuchar. highest voter turnout Thank in the you, country. Senator. I want to bring That's Congressman O'Rourke. Uh, Congressman O'Rourke, please respond. You know, I think a big part of, of leadership in showing our commitment to the American people is delivering on our commitments. As a member of Congress, when I learned that the El Paso...
So the other thing that Fox News is saying is that socialists are going to bankrupt the country. Well, we got Mr. Four-Time Bankruptcy running this damn nation. He may, bank he may literally bankrupt the country. $22 trillion worth of debt. He doesn't seem to give a shit about spending. Mr. Tax and spend and take all the taxes and throw it up in the air and who gives a shit? Mr. Money Bin, so give it to his 1% you know, buddies. Give it to his Mar-a-Lago friends. Hey, plutocracy, we're going to get rich off this. We're all going to make money. Let's build hotels in Saudi Arabia. Right? Who gives a shit if they're the ones that are responsible for 9-11. Who gives a shit? You know, we're in this war on terror. It doesn't mean anything. We're just, you know, we're just talking. Really, it's just a big cover to let the capitalist imperialist uh, steal everybody's natural resources. Also, quote, with Bernie on Medicare for All when it comes to raising taxes on middle class Americans so to pay for giant it. corporations and billionaires are going to pay more Middle class families are going to pay less out of pocket for their health care. And I'd like to finish talking about Addy, the guy who has ALS. This isn't funny. Okay, so that's enough commentary. They're going to sit there. They're bankrupt in the goddamn nation. We're on the verge of bankruptcy. And they're going to sit there and say, well, if we get health care for everybody, then we'll all be stronger. And then we won't be as sick as much. And being stronger and healthier, we will have a much more productive society. Bullshit. It's going to hurt the economy. It'll hurt the economy if we don't do this. Jesus Christ. So Jake Tapper, Jake Tapper just represents the corporate class, Joe Biden, very well. He actually explains himself later on, and he says that Joe Biden, he was trying to represent Joe Biden in the discussion. He was trying to do that. That was the whole point. That's why he picked on the so-called moderates, the, you know, John Delaney's. Those are the conservative Democrats. You only have liberal Democrats that want, you know, universal health care, and then you get the conservative Democrats that doesn't believe in life. They're in the wrong party. The basic profit model of an insurance company is taking as much money as you can in premiums and pay out as little as possible in health care coverage. That is not working Thank for you. America. So, Jake Tapper, he's going to ask the question about middle class taxes. Hey, you going to raise middle class taxes to get that sound bite? Bernie Sanders already said it. Bernie Sanders says, yes, you know, middle class taxes will probably go up. We've got to cover everybody. But out of all of the cost for middle class, your out-of-pocket expenses will be less. So you might, what, pay $5 a year in taxes? You pay 5 bucks a year in taxes, and then you don't have no more hospital bills. So your overall out-of-pocket costs are less. So Bernie Sanders already said yes, he's going to raise taxes. I believe Elizabeth Warren will raise taxes. I don't think that Beto O'Rourke or Pete Buttigieg will, but it, essentially maybe Pete might. Pete Buttigieg might. So, but anyways, Jake Tapper asked this question. EA had the worst wait times for mental health care in the country, meaning that care delayed functionally became care denied and was related to the suicide epidemic. We made it our priority and we turned around the VA in El Paso. We took that lesson nationally and I worked with Republican and Democratic colleagues to expand mental health care to veterans and we got it signed into law by the one person with whom I agree on almost nothing, Donald Trump to show that at the end of the day, we will put the American Thank people you. first before party, before any other concern. Thank you, Congressman O'Rourke. We've been asking voters to weigh in on what they'd most like to hear. Are you going to raise middle class taxes, right? So they could say, yes, I will raise middle class taxes. And then they'll print up a commercial the next day saying, see, the Democrats will raise your taxes. Okay, well, you know, $22 trillion in debt. So anyways, um... Fox News is great at telling me who my progressive heroes ought to be. If Fox News hates them, I love them. If Fox loves them, I hate them. So Laura Ingram and Rudy Giuliani, Huckabee, Mike Huckabee, some other guy was all talking about this debate right afterwards. And they really like how Jake Tapper really pressed them on middle class taxes. So Jake Tapper is representing Joe Biden, who is opposed to Medicare for all. He wants a public option for Bet uh, Obamacare. So he's doing it through a different path, right? Universal health care through a public option with Obamacare versus just a single-payer government health care for every single, you know, American. Old, young, red, white, or blue. <laughs> or, um... It's across this country. Thank you, Senator. Medicare for all will fix that, and that's why I'll Thank fight you, Senator. Just it. a point of clarification and 15 okay. extra... 
you know, gay, straight, whatever, every single American is going to get health coverage with Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren. I'm not so confident with Kamala Harris anymore. She's for a private, mixed, private public health care system, and it's convoluted. And, uh, and so only Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders and Marianne was warming up to the idea of being in favor of it. Bill de Blasio. Those are the only four or three candidates. Bill de Blasio, definitely. Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders will abolish the private health industry. This is exactly where we should be. All the Democrats should adopt Bernie's Medicare for All program. And then that, you know, takes the, uh, the steam, right? It takes the steam out of his plan because you're still going to get a Bernie Sanders health care plan with a Buddha judge or Beto. But they're not talking about that. The rest of them are for mixed private public, uh, like I said, public option with Obamacare. Two jobs in green manufacturing. There's going to be a $23 trillion worldwide market for this. This could revitalize huge cities across this country. And no one wants to talk about it. What you want to do instead is find the Republican talking point of a made-up piece of some other part and say, oh, we don't really have to do anything. That's the problem we've got in Washington right now. It continues to be a Washington that works great for oil companies, just not for people worried Thank about Thank you, Senator change. Warren. Congressman Ryan, yep. we are here in Michigan yep. where there are... So I'm going to show this in the very beginning, the very beginning clip um, after Steve Bullock was Jake Tapper just kept asking them the middle class taxes question. He asked Elizabeth Warren two times. He asked Pete Buttigieg two times. And neither, you know, Pete Buttigieg or Elizabeth Warren said straight up, yes, we're going to tax you, middle America. Yep, we're going to take your money, middle America. They didn't say that directly, which is what Jake Tapper was looking for. So it is a little bit ambiguous about where they stand for, but I believe Elizabeth Warren said, yes, she will raise middle class taxes, and maybe Pete Buttigieg said it too, but definitely Elizabeth Warren, definitely Bernie Sanders is going to raise taxes, and then Bill de Blasio is the only other one that's, you know, for Medicare for all, and I'm not sure if he's in favor of raising middle class taxes. So... They, you know, the Fox News people, they really love that Jake Tapper was asking this Republican question and really pushing hard on it. Eventually, he asked Beto O'Rourke, and Beto O'Rourke has the public slash private plan, and he said, no, we're not going to raise taxes. Well, that's because he's not for Medicare for all. He's not for Bernie Sanders, you know, M4A, Medicare for all. Seconds, would you raise taxes on the middle class to pay for Medicare for all, uh, offset, obviously, by the elimination of insurance premiums, yes or no? Costs will go up for billionaires and go up for corporations for middle-class families costs total costs will go down so bernie sanders is going to call jake tapper out say you know that's a republican talking point so bernie sanders calls jake tapper out on it and it was a talking point and guess what the republicans loved it fox news loved that republican talking point though oh, it's not a republican talking point but i agree with it and i talk about it all the time so you had Mike Huckabee, Rudy Giuliani, and then you had Laura Ingram, some other guy. Four people in the, you know, the box. And check it out on YouTube. I'm not going to show you any clips of them. But Laura Ingram's criticisms is very telling. Not by listening to what she says, but by reading between the lines, okay? So since Fox News absolutely loved John Delaney, John Delaney showed up for Fox News the day after and was complaining about the Democrats. That is very telling. If the Fox News crowd loves John Delaney, he's in the wrong party. He should run as a Republican, and I think he knows that. So maybe he calls himself a conservative Democrat, but I want a, a liberal progressive Democrat. I don't want no neoliberal conservative Republican Democrats anymore. I'm sick of that. What we all want to see, which is lower costs for health care. Do I think that we're going to vote to give free college to the wealthiest kids? No, I, I don't think we're going to do that. So that's what I'm talking about. But what I don't like about this argument right now, what I don't like about it at all, is that we are more worried about winning an argument than winning an election. And I think how we win an election is to bring everyone with us. So John Delaney complained about the Dems on Fox News the very next day. Gene Kugar said, John Delaney, it's over for John Delaney. And I think it probably is. But as an opposition speaker, as his, you know, his Republican career might have started after this race. So essentially, you know, what Fox News is telling me is John Delaney sucks a bunch of, you know, turd balls. Fuck John, you know, John Delaney. John Delaney is terrible. Rudy Giuliani absolutely loved John Delaney. 
The, he said that he didn't have a chance, which he's right about. But again, Fox News, Rudy Giuliani, they love John Delaney. So that means John Delaney's, you know, a piece of shit. Of whether or not the middle class should pay higher taxes in exchange for guaranteed health care and the elimination of insurance premiums. How do you respond, Mayor? So we don't have to stand up here speculating about whether the public option will be better that, or a Medicare for all environment will be better than the corporate options. We can put it to the test. That's the concept. And he's in the wrong party. It reminded me of Joe Lieberman. He's a right-wing Jewish Democrat who posed to be Al Gore's vice president in 2000. Democratic debates, they asked, who all smoked marijuana to raise their hands? It was Anderson Cooper. And that was a pivotal moment that normalized mar marijuana. You had all the Democratic candidates except for one who had smoked marijuana or admitted to sm smoking marijuana at some point in their life. Up to my Medicare for all who want a proposal. That way, if people like me are right, that the public alternative is going to be not only more comprehensive, but more affordable than any of the corporate options around there. We'll see Americans walk away from the corporate options into that Medicare option, and it will become Medicare. And then Joe Lieberman was all cheeky about it. Oh, oh my gosh, acting like he's Mr. Innocent. Well, I'm usually, you know, not in line with the Democratic establishment. So, yeah, he's a rebel. He's a rebel because he, you know, never smoked marijuana. He never experienced that. So that's what a fucking loser. You never tried marijuana. They're li everybody's lying about marijuana. So, you know, that's, uh, I'll go ahead and break it to you. There is no God and marijuana is okay. It's a wimp of a drug. So compared to alcohol, if I, you know, had to choose an addiction for my kid, I would choose marijuana over alcohol where you're, you know, drunk and crazy and out of your mind versus just being hungry, happy, and sleepy. Oh, no, he took a nap in the middle of the day. Oh, no, he ate, you know, all the Doritos. Who gives a fuck? Oh, he's happy. Well, that's, that's a good thing, isn't it? Here, Democrats debate. Among the topics they told us they're most interested in, the climate crisis. Congressman Delaney, I'll start with you. You say the Green New Deal is about as realistic as Trump saying Mexico is going to pay for the wall. But scientists say we need essentially to eliminate fossil fuel pollution by 2050 to avoid the most catastrophic consequences. So yeah, John Delaney is a goddamn Republican. He believes in God, country, family, and private health insurance corporations. He loves the premiums, the deductibles, and the co-pays because he gets all that money. So he loves, you know, robbing the American people blind and giving them lackluster care. And, you know, what the hell? Who the hell says they love? You know what? I really love my health insurance. I really, if you're rich enough, you know, good. You got a decent health care, but it's kind of like cell phones. Everybody has problems with them. They, ha you know, they're trying to make money, so they don't want to, you know, uh, approve your claim. They're trying to make money. So they want to make a bunch of money and give the least amount of health care that they can give so they can profit handsomely. What, billions of dollars? What do you say? $80 billion? So these private corporations made $80 billion. And, you know, we're not all covered. There's sick people all over the place. I think it's only 5% that hasn't been covered, but that's Colorado, and Colorado's done a good job. The state has done a good job with extending health care as far as possible. To a sustainable and regenerative agriculture system that actually sequesters carbon into the soil. And you can go ask, you can go ask Gabe Brown and, and Alan Williams, who actually make money off of regenerative agriculture. So we can move away from all the subsidies that we're giving the farmers. They haven't made a profit in five years. And we could start getting good food into our schools and into our communities. That's going to drive health care down. That so Fox News is later on going to say that Elizabeth Warren, Rudy Giuliani says Elizabeth Warren won because, you know, if he was a socialist, he would choose Elizabeth Warren. And then they're going to, you know, basically say Bernie was terrible. So they're scared of Bernie. They don't want me to support Bernie. They're scared of Bernie. And when it comes to Elizabeth Warren, she might be smarter or articulate in their perspective. Well, you know, and I could kind of understand you know, a little bit. But, you know, I would like for her to get up and I would like to see Elizabeth Warren get angry, too. Everybody liked that when she was like, hey. It's not funny. <laughs> and it was funny the way she had told the story. So, you know, but she got all, hey. So I like, you know, um, Bernie and Elizabeth Warren are at their best when they're at their angriest. I like angry Bernie. I like angry Elizabeth Warren. They're typically passive, humble people. So when they get mad, we should listen. And so we do the research. 
We then say anyone in the world can use it so long as you build it right here in America. That will produce about 1.2 million manufacturing jobs right here in Michigan, right here in Ohio, right here in the industrial Midwest. So Fox News just told me that Bernie Sanders is the, you know, going to be the hardest competitor against Trump and that Elizabeth Warren, while she, they're, you know, nervous about her, they would prefer to go against Elizabeth Warren. And, you know, that tells me, and I essentially, I mean, you could tell Bernie Sanders is more of a street fighter than Elizabeth Warren. So even though Elizabeth Warren has all the correct policies in terms of electability, Bernie Sanders is way more electable than Elizabeth Warren. Why isn't this sweeping plan to fight the climate crisis realistic? Well, first of all, because it ties its progress to other things that are completely unrelated to climate, like universal health care, guaranteed government jobs, and universal basic income. So that only makes it harder to do. My plan, which gets us to net zero by 2050, which we absolutely have to do for our kids and our grandkids. So Elizabeth Warren had a knockout punch against John Delaney. Elizabeth Warren asked John Delaney, why the hell are you even in this race? Why are you even in the race? He's Mr. Private Health Insurance. He's right-wing Republican. So why the hell are you even here? On the Democratic stage, he's just this, you know, he's put $7 million of his own money into the campaign, and he's like an ex, you know, congressman from out of Vermont or some shit. So he's nobody. He's, he doesn't have power. He's just a rich man who's got nothing else better to do. So Elizabeth Warren is correct. Why the hell are you on the stage to come here and tell us that we can't, if we can't get Medicare for all, can we end the wars? Can we, you know, stop these out-of-control police? Can we get some criminal justice reform? Can we make the courts actually accessible to we the people? Can we get our country back? Can we actually win our country and then make great America even greater, you know? The government, the Department of Energy, Department of Transportation, work with the private sector, work with investors, emerging tech companies to dominate the electric vehicle market. China dominates it now, 50 to 60 percent. I want us to dominate the battery market, make those here in the United States and cut the workers in on the deal. So that was a good knockout punch because... What, is the, what the hell is he doing in the race, right? He's, you know, made a bunch of money off the health care industry, insurance industry, private industry. So, of course, he wants to, you know, go against Medicare for all. That's why he is in the race. He is literally in the race. He was so proud to tell the Democrats, you know, what we can't do, what we shouldn't fight for. So Elizabeth Warren had, a, you know, a good line against John Delaney. Fox News loved John Delaney, called him a smart guy. So if Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders are opposed to John Delaney and Fox News loves John Delaney, that, that's telling me everything I need to know. Ben Mankiewicz of fucking Young Turks, I sort of blame him for Bernie Sanders losing. You know, he waited all night to, you know, see if Bernie won, but he was the Hillary Clinton fucking guy. That, you know, out of all of them, we could have had solidarity, and everybody would have been like, God, the entire crew of the Young Turks are for Bernie. That would have been amazing. That would have been awesome, that kind of solidarity. But nope, Ben Mankiewicz had to be, you know, loud and proud individual. Is like, no. You know, he argued for Hillary. He said he voted for Bernie. But he's got all these conservative views. He's going to say that John Delaney is a smart guy, great businessman. So is Fox News. So Ben Mankiewicz probably would be more at home at Fox News. We're being offered a false choice. Some who want to improve the Affordable Care Act at the margins, Others who want a Medicare for all program that will force people off of private insurance. I have a better path. Medicare for America. Everyone who's uninsured is enrolled in Medicare tomorrow. Those who are insufficiently insured are enrolled in Medicare. And then, of course, Fox News is going to paint Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren as radical left-wing loonies. They're socialists. They're all socialists. The socialists are coming. The socialists are coming. So Elizabeth Warren is a capitalist. She doesn't even recognize that we have a mixed socialist capitalist system. She's not a socialist capitalist. She is a... Care. Just a 15 seconds. And those who, who have employers who is offering, sponsored who's insurance. Offering a Jake, this is important. Here. Who's offering a false choice here? You, you have some. Uh, Governor Bullock, who said that we will uh, improve the Affordable Care Act at the margins with a public option. You have others, to my okay. right, who are talking about taking away people's choice for the private insurance they have or members of unions. I was listening to Thank D. You, Taylor in Let Nevada. Me, Nevada. Bernie Sanders is a capitalist socialist. He's an Eisenhower Republican. So he believes in a mixed system. He's very, you know, he's the moderating voice. You have, you know, Evo Morales, who's a socialist president. You had Eugene Debs, Jill Stein, all the Green Party. They are more 
radical than Elizabeth Warren. So to say that she's a socialist, that's just factually incorrect. That she's not a socialist at all. She's a fucking capitalist. That's another part of the health care conversation that we didn't even have. How do we start Thank talking you, about Graham. health instead of just disease care? Thank you, Senators. John Delaney claimed a bunch of shit. He said all the hospitals in the United States would close because Medicare for all doesn't pay 100%, which is kind of, that's the Medicare rate or Medicaid, it's 87%. So that's, wait, you know, a hospital's not going to close if 87% of all their residents pay their bills. In fact, that's probably a better rate than private health care rates. Medicare pays 87%. So that's, you know, you're not going to close with 87 And then he said all the hospitals, every single hospital, you can't make that claim. All i got to do is find one example. It's a for all statement. All the hospitals, no, not all the hospitals. Shut the fuck up, John DeLynn, you lying piece of shit. But Mike Huckabee. He says, you know, John Delaney is not like the other Democrats, and then Mike Huckabee is going to mock Marianne Williamson. So those are the three people who won the first debate, Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, Marianne Williamson. They're mocking them because they're afraid of them. Mike Huckabee says, oh, he saw Marianne Williamson over at Woodstock. And that's an endorsement. And the second thing we will do is we will then sell those products all around the world. Right now, for every one dollar the United States spends trying to market around the world, Thank you, China's Senator Warren. spending a hundred dollars. Thank you, Senator. She's a hippie. I want a hippie. To, you know, I want my president to be a hippie Woodstock attender. Let's have Woodstock all over the fucking place. What peace, love, freedom, music, and marijuana? Peace, love. Let's all get along. You know, sing kumbaya, take off our clothes, run around, just be free and naked. <laughs> this is Woodstock, right? So Marianne Williamson, that's, you know, Mike Huckabee mocks Marianne. Now I like Marianne more. He also said Marianne Williamson rubbed a crystal. Oh, she's rubbing a crystal. So they're basically saying she's kind of like a witch. And she, you know, is in all of this weird witchcraft shit. Seth Myers is going to make a crystal joke, too, regarding Marianne Williamson. Uh, Seth Myers, I don't know, I'm more sympathetic, but it felt like Mike Huckabee's mocking was cruel. Stephen Colbert had a funny joke. He said that Marianne Williamson threw some unicorn red meat to her base. <laughs> some unicorn red meat. So the fact that she's spiritual and that she's, you know, in touch with her, you know, spiritual side, that's a good thing. I like those things. We need a, a um, enlightenment, a renaissance. In this Activity that cannot be allowed Thank to Thank you, continue. Senator well, Sanders. Congressman, your response. Well, yeah, I would, I would just say... I didn't say we couldn't get there till 2040, Bernie. You don't have to yell. I mean, all I'm saying is... Enlightenment in America. Bernie Sanders, he points out that the CNN had private insurance advertisers running advertisements during the debate, and they did. There was a group of private insurance companies that ran an advertisement during, you know, the whole Bernie Sanders socialism, Medicare for all breakout act of the third Democratic debate, saying how Medicare for America would be bad for America. So... Okay, yeah, thanks. So CNN definitely made sure that the, you know, these damn corporations are good, get the damn hands on the, you know, our universal Medicare for America, and they're going to get in there somehow. So don't be worried, America. Corporate America will do okay. They'll find some way to skim off the top of Medicare, you know, universal Medicare for America. Some Republicans on Fox News said the lesser of the socialist is still a socialist. So Elizabeth Warren, she's capitalist, but, you know, She's a socialist. Elizabeth Warren, she's a Republican for up until 1996, so she's a Republican for most of her life, for decades upon decades. She probably voted for Nixon and Ronald Reagan and Gerald Ford, didn't vote for Jimmy Carter, George McGovern. So she's been right-wing, you know, in her earlier years, in the spring and summer of her life. The charging stations, solar panels, same thing. China dominates 60% of the solar panel market. So this person will work in the White House, report directly to me, and we're going to start making things again. But you cannot get there on climate unless we talk about agriculture. We need to convert our industrial agriculture system over... She's got a couple of progressive ideas. I like her no first use nuclear strike policy a lot, but that has nothing to do with socialism. That's military. So that's... You know, to call Elizabeth Warren a socialist, that's politically stupid. And Pete Buttigieg said it right. They'll call you a socialist no matter what. So instead of trying to not be a false label by your opponents, fuck them. Who gives a shit what your opponents say? They're going to call you a socialist no matter what. So 
Pete Buttigieg says, just figure out what you believe to be the best policy is, and then do that, and then defend that, you know, so they're going to, you know, whether you're a socialist or not. Actual socialism is when the workers control the factories. Actual socialism is when the workers control the means of production. And what's so scary about that? As a worker bee, when you want to be in charge of your own life and your own labor, when you rather own your own self, your own body, what's so scary about the workers controlling the factories? It only scares the oppressors. It only scares the bosses. It only scares the ruling class. So that's the only people that socialism would scare is the ruling class, the working class, this socialism would liberate the working class. And then this our America and this our country and this land made for you and me, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. We have those things. I'm going to increase investment in renewables, and I'm going to create something called the Climate Corps. That is a plan that's realistic. It's a bet on the U.S. private innovation economy and creates the incentives to get us Thank to you. net zero by 2050 Thank for you. our kids. Thank you, Congressman. Senator Warren, you're a co-sponsor of the Green New Deal. Your response to Congressman Delaney. So climate crisis is the existential crisis for our world. It puts every living thing on this planet at risk. I have a plan for a green industrial policy that takes advantage of the fact that we do what we do best, and that is innovate and create. So I propose putting $2 trillion in. I bet you Republicans of today would have called the end of slavery. So that's socialism. Anything they disagree with, so that's socialism. They said Obama was a socialist. That could have been farther from the truth. If he, if he was a socialist, he would have been a great president, but he's barely a progressive on very few issues. You know, like transgender rights, and he went too far on that one. So Rudy Giuliani said that Elizabeth Warren won because he says out of the two crazy socialists, Elizabeth Warren was more sophisticated and articulate than Bernie Sanders. Rudy Giuliani said that if he was a socialist, because, you know, he could put himself in the shoes of a socialist so easily, he would definitely vote for Elizabeth Warren. So if Rudy Giuliani was a socialist, he would vote for the candidate who calls herself a capitalist, right? So he's such a great socialist, he's going to vote for the capitalist, but not the candidate who calls himself a democratic socialist. So Rudy Giuliani would be the stupidest socialist on the planet, you know, on planet Earth. The third rock from the sun. Sanders, your response? I get a little bit tired of Democrats afraid of big ideas. Republicans are not afraid of big ideas. They could give a trillion dollars in tax breaks to billionaires and profitable corporations. <laughs> then Rudy Giuliani says that he wants her as an opponent. So which is it, Rudy Giuliani? Is she the greatest socialist ever and she would be a great candidate for the socialists? Or do you think she's easy prey? She would be easy, it would be easier to beat her. So, okay, as a socialist, you're going to vote for a capitalist? Shut the fuck up, Rudy Giuliani. You, you, they're trying to trick, that, Rudy is just trying to trick the millennial socialist into voting for the capitalist Democrat because he believes that it would be an easier fight. And I, I see that. I think that Bernie Sanders is more of a street fighter than Elizabeth Warren, which makes him, you know, more electable. I don't like the whole electable argument. Frankly, if you got the right policy, I don't give a fuck what you look like or what you sound like. Or if you got the right policies... I would champion you all the way to the White House. Warren, Governor Hickenlooper, you take issue with the Green New Deal. Please respond. Well, I think the guarantee for a public job for everyone. So, you know, that's what they're trying to do. Trick the millennial socialists to vote for Elizabeth Warren because they think Elizabeth Warren is weaker and they think that they could beat her. So when Rudy was like, ooh, I'd love to run against her. Ooh, yeah, I would love to run against her. <laughs> no, it was all creepy. And the one who wants one is a classic part of the problem. It's a distraction. I share, share the urgency of everyone up here. Uh, we have to recognize, I mean, everyone's got good ideas. What we do in this country is no better than just a best practice, right? It's what we do here is a, is a best practice and a template, but it's got to be done all over the world. So we've got to be building bridges right now with people like China who were cheating on international agreements and stealing intellectual property. We need to work on that, but not with the tariff system. We need every country working together if we're going to really deal with climate change in a realistic way. Thank, thank you. Senator Warren, your response. Look, I put a real policy on the table to create <laughs> 1.2 million new... Weird and weirdo creep. Oh, you can't wait to run against Elizabeth Warren. So I think he's a little bit nervous about her, but I think that he's more afraid of Bernie Sanders. 
and uh, he can't wait to campaign against her. What a weirdo. What a fucking creepy-ass weirdo. And so, you know, if he can't wait to campaign against her, why would you say she's the best socialist? She wasn't the best socialist. She's not even a socialist. Only one socialist, and he was the best. Bernie Sanders beat the shit out of everybody on that debate stage. He even won the next debate. He is so good, even his policies was dictating the conversation for the second debate. So all Rudy Giuliani told me was Elizabeth is a weaker candidate. Bernie Sanders can fight Donald better, which is true. I like Liz's way. I would champion her, you know, over Donald. But Jill Stein only got 1%. So for some reason, even though America, I love, you know, precious revolutionaries, uh, America needs more of a fighter, right? So everybody's saying street fighter. So Kamala and Tulsi. Kamala looks like she could be a real dick. She's a prosecutor, right? Tulsi Gabbard, she's, you know, military, so she's got those broad shoulders. So, you know, the, I think Kamala and Tulsi would probably be better fighters than Elizabeth Warren. They're not so feminine. They're more about brute force. To, uh, Kamala, they're both actually very feminine, though, too. All I'm saying is we have to invent our way out of this thing. And if we're waiting for 2040 for a ban to come in on gasoline vehicles, we're screwed. So we better get busy now. Um, Kamala, a little bit more feminine than Tossie. So this whole talk of street fighters mostly right, but we're giving Donald way too much credit. He's just an asshole. So just talk over him, out asshole him. You know, come up with your alternative vision and just, you know, pitch it to the American people. If Donald Trump crosses your path, you got to, you know, tit for tat. He's an asshole. So you just have to out asshole him. you got to be a bigger asshole. He doesn't look that hard to beat. To me, to be honest, he's got a horrible record. The country, you know, half the country has hated him the entire time. He hasn't done shit for half the country. He's not about uniting this country, so he'll talk his bullshit, but you get to talk yours. So don't take the high ground, you got to take the low ground. If they insult you, you got to insult them back, tit for tat. you got to get in that gutter with them. You know, they say, don't get in that No, get in the gutter, and then get into the sewer, and get, you know, as uh, skank as you can. <laughs> you got to go skank. He, he goes skank, you got to go skank. So, you know, Donald Trump says, your mom's a hoe. Oh, really? My mom's a hoe, Donald? Well, your grandma, mother, and daughter are skank-ass hoes. How about that, Donald? Huh? You gonna call my mother a hoe or your mother and all the people that you know? They're all hoes. Skank-ass hoes. Dirty, skank-ass hoes. Dirty. Not even profits. They ain't even getting money for it. They're just... How just dirty. <laughs> and that's why I'm saying get a chief manufacturing officer, align the environmental incentives with the financial incentives, and make sure that people can act. So I, I'm just bothered by all the rhetoric, right? If somebody says a good line, so Tulsi Gabbard had, you know, an articulate, constructive criticism of Kamala Harris, and the people were sitting there saying, oh my God, Kamala's gone. That's it for Kamala. No, it was a good constructive policy piece. It was constructive criticism. This will make Kamala Harris even stronger and better. So this is, you know, a lot of people say, oh, they can't criticize. They're going to hurt each other too bad. No, they're not. This will make them stronger. How do you become a better fighter? You practice, and you go out there, and you keep fighting. So they just need to keep on debating and keep on talking and figure out, you know, what the best ideas are. And the great pool of ideas, only the best ideas should prevail. There are about 180,000 workers in auto manufacturing. Your state of Ohio has around 96,000 workers in that industry. Senator Sanders is co-sponsoring a bill that would eliminate new gas-powered car sales by 2040. I think Elizabeth Warren could hold her own, and then she could also use her feminine wiles, too, because, oh, you're such a bully, you know, just because I'm a woman, you think you can, you know, talk over me? You sexist piece of crap, so, you know, she could pull the, the female card. So I think Elizabeth Warren would hold her own against Donald. I would, uh, you know, vote for Elizabeth over Donald. But the Donald, uh, Bernie Sanders, God, we won this fight four years ago. We're going to get this fight, okay? Donald and Bernie need to be on the same stage. And let's see what they agree on and let's see what they disagree on. We've, had, we've needed this conversation for America for quite some time. What Comedy Central is the only thing that's going to give us Bernie versus Donald. God, we need a Bernie versus Donald conversation as soon as possible, America. They could bail out the crooks on Wall Street. So please don't tell me that we cannot take on the fossil fuel industry and nothing happens unless we do that. that whether, you know, it's Tulsi or Kamala or Elizabeth Warren, I would tell them all the same thing tit for tat, so it's just words, right? They're not actually attacking each other. I mean, there is that, you know, sort of um, perspective thing. 
uh, you know, men are going to be stronger than women, so whenever I see, you know, I don't know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you had um, Rambo, <laughs> uh, with Sylvester Stallone, he said that sometimes you just want to punch Arnold in the face, <laughs> which, you know, because he's a man, that's like, oh, okay, well, yeah, of course. But if you're, you know, if he was to say that about a woman, well, it's, you know, against society to, you know, you're not allowed to, <laughs> it's okay to, you know, knock a man out, but, you know, for women, it's, um, if you're another woman, right, Tulsi is allowed to knock out Kamala Harris, but she didn't knock her out, she criticized her, uh, Kamala very poignantly, and it was very good criticism, but, you know, a lot of, there's blows and elbows, and then they pulled the knives out. There was no knives, it wasn't a bloodbath, you know, it was a conversation, and they uh, disagreed and agreed in some areas. It was just a conversation, and so to say, oh my God, that was a knockout punch. It was a good moment, but a knockout punch, no, I, I would really, I would love to see a cage match. I would love to see them actually really go at it, but that's because they believe in their beliefs so much. Not like over superficial shit, but just be like, hey, this is why we should get out of these wars. This is why we should have Medicare for all. Here is the bottom line. We've got to ask ourselves a simple question. What do you do with an industry that knowingly, for billions of dollars in short-term profits, is destroying this planet? I say that is criminal. So while I would tell Elizabeth Warren, you know, if they go low, you go lower. Get in the gutter with them. You got to, if they're going to sit there and throw the first stone, you know, he is, who is without sin, throw the first stone. Ow, oh, shit, you, you threw a stone? Okay, well, now I'm throwing stones, you prick, right? They're going to throw stones, they're going to throw punches, they're going to throw Chinese stars. You got to throw those right back at them. That's self-defense. Self-defense is intelligence. Uh, that's, you know, Malcolm X, so Malcolm X forever. Careful. So just, Without us having we, to kick just anybody just 15, off our Just 15 train. seconds on the clarification. You are willing to raise taxes on middle-class Americans in order to have universal coverage with the disappearance of insurance premiums, yes or no? I think you can buy into it. That's the idea of Medicare for all who want it. Look, this is a distinction without a difference, whether you're paying the same money Mike Huckabee was bitching hardcore on Bernie Sanders. So Mike Huckabee was sitting there saying that Bernie Sanders, he's an angry old man, like an angry old uncle, comes over to your house and just bitches about everything. He's a get off my lawn curmudgeon. That's what Mike Huckabee, so he was sitting, you know, they're basically saying Elizabeth Warren is kind of good, kind of bad, but Bernie Sanders, he's terrible. And that, you know, um, the, a candidate for president should have some level of likability. So Mike Huckabee is saying by him being an angry old man, that's going to make him less likable. That's, that's the opposite. Kyle Kalinske, and I agree with him, said Bernie is at his best when Bernie's an angry old man. So I like angry Elizabeth. I like angry Bernie Sanders. As long as Bernie can temper his rage, I want to hear everything that those calm, humble people, I want to, see, I want to hear what they're pissed off about. If Bernie Sanders or Elizabeth Warren is pissed off about something, you know, Americans will relate to it. And I want to know what, you know, what the hell they're mad about. You're pissed off at the nuclear policy of America? Tell me more, Elizabeth Warren. Tell me more. Former taxes or premiums. Look, in this country, if you have health coverage, if you don't have health co coverage, you're paying too much for care. And if you do have health coverage, you're paying Thank too you, much Mayor for Buttigieg. care. Jane. I want to bring in Congressman O'Rourke <clears throat> on the topic of whether the middle class so Fox News, you know, went ahead and actually told me who won this debate. Rudy Giuliani said that Elizabeth Warren won, so that means she lost. Bernie Sanders won. And then Laura Ingram and Mike Huckabee said that Bernie was an angry old man and that wasn't going to work, so that means it will work, right? They're mocking Marianne Williamson. These are the three candidates that they're afraid of. So Bernie Sanders, Elizabeth Warren, and Marianne Williamson won that first debate. They were breakout candidates. The second debate, it was, you know, a decent discussion, but you didn't have one candidate that just shined more than the rest. And then CNN and MSNBC are talking the same shit that Fox is. So everybody's worried about how is Bernie going to pay for his Medicare for all. This is the only time we're worried about, you know, our expenses. $22 trillion, but we're worried about if Bernie gets to become president in a year and a half, how is he going to pay for this? How about just use the money that's in the Treasury right now and quit paying for other shit and start Jesus. So, Dana Bash said Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren are only playing to their progressive bases, not to the general public. Class should pay higher taxes in exchange for universal coverage and the elimination of insurance premiums. What's your response? The answer is no. The middle class will not pay more in taxes in order to ensure that every American is guaranteed world-class health care. I think like Don Lemon is warning us about going to left. Andrew Cuomo quoted Amy Klobacher 
So the Democrats can't go left enough for me. Keep pushing. Keep going left. The more left they are, the more of a different candidate and opposition candidate they will be. So when the American people have a choice, they won't say, well, there's, you know, their policies are the same. And so I kind of like, they'll go with the Republican over a Republican-like candidate every time. So the Democrats have to have their own personality, their own character, their own policies. they got to present an alternative view. They have to be an opposition candidate. They have to show that, you know, America, not only is this America going the wrong direction, but they're going to bring us into, you know, uh, steer us into the correct direction. So no Republican-like candidates. We need progressives and liberals, and we need a Democratic Socialist. And I want, you know, if you're not a Democratic, I want a Democratic Socialist. I want a Bernie Sanders or better. If you're not with Bernie Sanders at his level of policies, and you know, then you, get it the hell out of here. I want a Bernie Sanders or better. That's the presidency that I'm aiming for. Actually make money off of the new technologies that are moving forward. And then here's what I'll do as Thank president. You, cut the worker in on the deal. Make sure these are union jobs. And I will double union membership to make sure that these new jobs pay with the old fossil fuel jobs. Senator pay. Sanders, your response. Look. So after the debate, Jake Tapper explained himself. He said that since Joe Biden is in the race and Joe Biden was number one and that he's polling real high, then he wanted to give the moderate wing of the party their time. And so he gave plenty of time to the moderate wing to make their arguments. And Jake Tapper, he thinks, you know, because Joe Biden's winning, that the moderate wing of the party is winning. So he's clearly on one side. Jake Tapper is not for Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren. He probably loved cutting them off. B, it means we have to transform our energy system away from fossil fuel to energy efficiency and sustainable energy and a hell of a lot of good union jobs as we do that. We've got to transform our transportation Thank you, Senator. system and we have to lead the world. Thank you, Senator this Sanders. Is not just an Jake Tapper was given John Hinkenlooper, John Delaney, Steve Bullock room to make Joe Biden's argument against Bernie and Elizabeth Warren's Medicare for All program. John Delaney got a bunch of time. He's only pulling that 1%. And yet Steve Bullock, John Delaney, John Hinkenlooper, and then Tim Ryan, they got plenty of time. They got lots of time to make Bernie, uh, Joe Biden's argument against Bernie and Elizabeth Warren. So essentially John Delaney's just for, you know, just like Fox News and the Republicans. He's for the capitalists. He's for the wealthy, the rich. He's opposed to Democrats, cause, you know, but then he is a Democrat. So what kind of shitty Democrat is this? CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, they're all corporations. They're just trying to make a buck. So, of course, they're going to love other private insurance corporations and rich men. And they love the Saudi Arabians. On this issue, my friends, there is no choice. We have got to be super aggressive if we love our children and if we want to leave them a planet that is healthy and is habitable. So I don't disagree with Tim. What that means is we got to, A, take on the fossil fuel industry. For some reason, but not, they want a capitalist, but not Elizabeth Warren capitalist. They want uh, another kind of capitalist. So, yeah, that's essentially, you know, Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders kicked ass. Elizabeth Warren said, why the hell are you even running? John Delaney, he's going to turn his public appearance into gold for his corporate cronies. But I don't want to see John Delaney in there again. Fuck John Delaney. One good point, John Delaney had a good comparison by saying Medicare for all without private insurance is like banning all private pensions while introducing Social Security. The only difference is private pensions is your retirement fund. And Medicare for all, so it's, they're, you know, it's a good comparison because they're both government programs. And they're saying ban the pro but they're different things, right? So one is old age security, and the other thing is being able to go to the hospital when you're sick. So, you know, you need both, right? But to... Given the number of auto manufacturing workers in your state, how concerned are you about Senator Sanders' plan? Well, if we get our act together, we won't have to worry about it. I, I, my plan is to create a chief manufacturing officer so we could actually start making things in the United States again that would pull... Yeah, I think the private corporations, they'll be... It, it doesn't matter. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. So Bernie Sanders says, let's get a government-only Medicare for All system. The private corporations will get in there somehow. They'll always slither their fucking greedy hands get their greedy paws on our brand new true blue universal health care system. It would probably be the bedrock for the American government. That would be the, you know, fund that they'll take from, just like they do to Social Security. So the, we'll be fine. We'll be fine with Bernie Sanders. You know, maybe we'll get just government single-payer health care. 
we'll probably get a mixed system with Bernie Sanders. So that's I'm not worried about the insurance corporate executives. It's the American people I'm worried about. I want the American people to have health care. I want if you're sick, you go into the hospital and you get taken care of. The, the diseases of our society doesn't spread around just because you don't have you know fifty dollars to go to get a checkup. That's that's bullshit. And if it's a surgery or emergency room medicine is way more expensive than preventive medicine. So if people are eating right and exercising right, then we don't have to use the health care system as much. So it encourages good, healthy habits. It's, it's good. It's fucking good. I love Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All pr program, and I don't want anything less. I even want these other candidates to at least have a Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All program. If you don't, I, I don't like you. I do think we talk way too much about health care. We've got so many other fucking issues to talk about. Um, but ultimately, I guess, to be honest, I, it doesn't matter to me if we get a public option through Obamacare or if we get universal health care through just a single-payer government system. Both of them gets us close to where we want to go. But I want to go with Bernie Sanders because he's got, you know, he's got all the chips. He's got all the chips. He's got the strongest hand in the game. America, is true. Governor Bullock, your response. You know, all of us agree that we have to address climate change. No one on the stage is talking about, though, the Republicans won't even acknowledge that climate change is real, Dana. And that's because of the corrupting influence of money. That has been the fight of money. So Bernie's plan will have those greedy corporate vultures begging, begging, begging to be included at the negotiating table. They might get there, but, you know, I like that position in terms of negotiating instead of saying, well, we'll let them at the table, and then they just, you know, get their, their parasites, and they'll just slither on through and then wind up infecting the whole thing and then taking it all down. So I think it's very good to, you know, I think it's good. I think it's good. Good, 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 good. <laughs> so, yeah. Vote for Bernie Sanders, America. Peace. No, health care is so personal to all of us. Never forget when my 12-year-old son had a heart attack within 24 hours of his life. Had to be life flighted to Salt Lake City. But because we had good insurance, he's here with me tonight. His, well, his members just said you're, the he just said you're offering a false for. choice, sir. Congressman, not at all. 